Once you've opened up the spreadsheet from Windows Explorer, you may get a, a macro um, message. Um, there's a lot of macros in this workbook and you'll have to enable it. Sometimes you won't get this, but just click on enable the content and then you'll get a, a message box um, with a bit of a disclaimer saying that you're free to use the tool. Um, however, if you want to update it, you can come to our website and get an update or um, put your own data in there. So just click on I agree, let's go. And you'll come to um, the sheet. Now, the, the workbook has a number of uh, tabs down here, the worksheets, starting off with some instructions, um, some, some, some basic instructions on how to use the workbook. And then we've got the next four worksheets that include outcomes. That is some sort of risk tolerances that you might use during your LOPA study, initiating event frequencies, barrier frequencies, modifiers, and just a sheet for recommendations and actions to take throughout the worksheet. So the main one you want to work with is the summary sheet. So to start a new scenario, click on the scenario button, new scenario button. And what you need to do here is enter the middle of the bow tie. So this is going to be the a description of the scenario. So let's, let's start off with uh, like a rupture case. So let's say we're going to have overpressure of vessel one, two, three, leading to rupture, yeah? And we might say it's a fatality on site for now and we'll go generate scenario. All right, so now you can see down the bottom that we've got scenario one that has been created. So it's created a LOPA sheet for scenario one. Now, this Excel workbook can create up to 200 sheets. So you can have up to 200 scenarios that are within the same Excel file. Now, when the, when the scenario has been created, you have a number of pre-configured, you have a bow tie that's pre-configured. And each bow tie has up to 20 initiating events and up to 20 barriers. What you can see here is the, the first five initiating events. If you want to make your workbook a bit cleaner um, and not show everything, you can, you can close down initiating events by clicking on these expand and contract buttons within Excel. So let's start off with maybe three initiating events. And likewise on the barriers, we've got one, two, three, four, five shown. Let's, 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 let's reduce it down to three. If you need to show the ten, five to 10 and 10 to 15, you just click on these plus buttons. So we've got the initiating events, we've got the barriers. Over here, we've got our time at risk. Then we've got what we call the middle of the bow tie, the description that we put in initially. You can change that text if you need to. And then moving over to the right-hand side of the bow tie, we've got our conditional modifiers. Right now you can see one, two, three, four. We're probably not gonna need four for this demo, so let's, let's contract that to two, and so you only see two. So two bow ties now. Let's, let's go and fill in um, some information. So that's called the first initiating event. Let's imagine it's a a control loop failure. So let's call it um, LC213 failure. So it's a level control failure. Um, and that's, so we click on the, we put a description in and the description should be some sort of tag name. If you want to add some more information to the, to the box, you go to the, um, fill the information in the, in the, in the comments field. And those, th that information will come into your rep PDF reports at the end. So after we've filled in the tag name, we need to now fill in the type of failure it is. So what we have to do here is pick out of the different types of initiating events. We have BPCS, equipment failures, human errors, and others. So really just four different buckets of initiating events. So let's, let's imagine this is a BPCS. So whenever you see uh, an orange field, that means you have to enter something. So for this particular initiating event, we have to choose um, we have three choices here. We can make, we can add to those choices later on, but let's take three choices, one of the three choices, and we'll, we'll control, we'll call this the control loop failure. All right, so we've got, uh, it's, it's given as a failure rate of uh, 0.1 per year, or one in 10 years for, for, for control loop failure. Let's do another failure. So let's imagine we're going to have a, um, some sort of equipment failure. Yeah? Equipment failure. Um, um, we'll put three, two, one. Yeah. Let's make it a 
um, some sort of equipment failure, and you can see now we've got an orange box again. And we'll say this is a pump um, uh, pump, uh, pump failure loss of flow. All right, so that's one in 10 years. And then the last one we'll do is maybe we'll do a human error. So let's go to human error, um, SOP, SOP not followed. All right, so this, for this type of event, we'll pick human initiating event. And with human initiating events, we have two choices. We have to decide on the complexity of the task. Um, here we have three options, simple, medium, and complex. Um, for simple, simple uh, SOPs or for simple act activities, the error rate is lower. We have 0 0.001 configured. And as you go up to medium and complex, the error rate increases by a factor of 10. So let's, let's assume this is a medium complexity, um, so it's an error rate of 1 in 100. And how many times are we doing this per year? Let's say we're doing it three times a year. So now we've got our initiating events configured. So now what we're going to do is put some barriers in. Okay, so these are going to be our IPLs or, or other controls that may help us control or con manage this risk. So let's, let's imagine, let's take a case where we're going to put a BPCS trip in. Yeah, so let's call this um, PC PC three three three. All right, so let's call it a, some sort of control function in the BPCS. So in the barriers, we have a number of options. We can have BPCS barriers, we can have alarms, PSVs, other and so barriers. So let's imagine it's a BPCS. And once you select BPCS, then you you go to the orange box again. And now you can say, okay, this is this is an independent trip. Let's imagine this. So this is a BPCS, but it's a different BPCS from the initiating event. So we can take credit for this. So we'll put in for any barrier that we want to take credit for. We we need to put an X in there. But let's imagine this barrier doesn't help us with the equipment failure. So what we can do is say, oh, this is not effective. Any text that we fill in in these boxes that is not an X will not get counted with the mathematics. So only only boxes that have an X and a purple in them will get counted, right? And and let's make the uh, let's put an X on the final one. So let's make a another barrier. Let's imagine we've got a an alarm. So let's put a PAH four four four. Okay. So pressure alarm high four four four. We'll make it an an alarm category. And we'll say it's a response time is greater than 10 minutes. So th these are just um, fields that we can fill in as we go. And the PFDs are appeared here under, underneath that point one. And so let's imagine we can use the alarm um, for the second one. Not the first one because it's not independent. So we might want to type in not independent. All right, and we can take the alarm there. Okay, and finally we can we can put a, we, we might want to put a SIL function in or a SIF in. So but let's call this a new SIF. All right, so let's make it a SIL, a SIL category and we'll call that a, maybe a SIL1 function. And because it's independent, we're going to include it in maths, yeah? All right, so we've filled in the initiating events, we've filled in the barriers and IPLs. Now we're going to look at the time at risk. Because this is a, a continuous operation or near continuous operation, we're going to pick from the time at risk and we'll say this is a continuous operation. For the, for the equipment failure, we'll also call it continuous operation. And for the human error, we, we can't choose, choose it because with, with human error, we can't take time at risk. And so now what we're going to do is, is go over the conditional modifiers. So let's imagine this is a flammable mixture that's being coming out of the vessel one, two, three. Uh, the first thing we, we might say, we're going to have a fire event that we're going to consider. So let's look at the first conditional modifier and it might be the probability of ignition. So let's, let's imagine the probability of ignition is 10%. And we're going to apply that to each of the, each of the, each of the threat lines. So the, each of these lines is initiating event is a threat line. Right, so that's a probability of ignition. We've assumed to be 10%, and if the event is a fire, a jet fire, we may there might be a chance that somebody is uh, killed if they're exposed to the heat. 
So let's make a, let's take an exposure um, probability. So this is the probability that somebody will be in the in the zone, in the fatal zone. And uh, for now, we'll assume that they're going to be there ten percent of the time. Okay, so now we have completed our bow tie. Yeah, our loop of bow tie. So we have the initiating events, barriers, conditional modifiers, and final final frequency over here. So what you can see over here now is the frequency of each line. So this this um, this frequency of point ten to the minus two is the is the basically the multiplication of the initiating event by the conditional modifiers, enabling events in the barriers. And likewise, as you go through, you can see. Um, with these numbers here, 49% and 49%, that the top two lines contribute 49% each to the total risk. And down at the bottom, we have the total frequency. Yeah, so the total cumulative frequency is 1.93 times 10 to the 5. So we have the frequency of the the first line, second line, and third line. All right, and then we got to compare that to our risk target. So that's the... Um, that's our bow tie. Now we can shrink that down to see a bit more. So that's the completion of scenario number one. Now what I haven't shown you yet is how to change the, the, the data. Let's imagine we want to have a, a particular risk, risk, risk tolerance for the, um, this jet fire that we've got at this plant. So let's call it um, a jet fire risk, jet fire risk target. And we'll make it the same risk tolerance so one e minus five tenth of minus five um so we've got the outcomes we've got the initiating events so if you want to add your own custom initiating events um you can add them to this list so that's um let's make a new one for the um bpcs initiating event so how about that this let's call that uh, we'll have a um mechanical regulator and we'll put point zero one five here, yeah? just out of interest here. Yeah? Oops. All right, and then barriers. We have, you can see here, we've got BPCS alarms, relief devices, and other barriers and sill. So let's let's call this a good. We'll make a new function called good sill one. Yeah. And the PFD will be point zero three. Okay. And then the conditional modifiers and time at risk. So you can change these as well. So let's go back into the scenario. And instead of the the, um, the, the SIL1 function, now we can choose maybe that good SIL1 that we just put in. And likewise, on our outcome, we can come over here. Instead of saying fatality on fight, flight, sorry, fatality on site, we can go down to the bottom of the list. And we can add in the jet fire risk target. Yeah, so we can completely customize this scenario. So that's how we use the workbook. Now, there's a few more functions in here. So if you go to this Loper Services book uh, button in the left-hand corner, click on that. So there's three there's, there's sort of three or four key things here that you can do. One is you can export all your information to a PDF file. So if you click on that, you can either export all the scenarios or one specific scenarios to, to a PDF file. And what it will do is export the bow tie and the common fields. So you've got all your assumptions there. So I'll just cancel that. Another option is to create a, what we call an after action sheet. An after action sheet will basically replicate scenario one and allow you to modify it and put new actions in there. So let's do that. We'll go create after action sheet. So it might take 30 seconds or so. Right, so now you can see down here we've got scenario one and scenario one AA. AA stands for after action sheet. So we can imagine, let's put a new IPL in there. We can call this um, a new IPL. And you can see every time we add in something new, it's, it's color coding it green. So let's make this a pressure safety valve. And we'll assume it's a PSV with management systems in. And let's imagine it can apply on the top line. So now we've added something new to the to the to the to the scenario, so we can compare the original versus the changed version. And with that, I would like to close out this video. So I hope you've got um, 
any um, some good information out of this, um, feel free to contact us at info at safetysolutions.co.nz if you have any questions on how to use this workbook. Thank you.